Hi, and welcome to the House of Praise online service. We're so glad that you're here. We hope that this broadcast is a meaningful connection to God for you. Do the best you can to remove any distractions so that you can connect to God. One more thing, please do me a favor and fill out your Connect card online. It's very short and will only take one minute. This way we know who is watching and there's a place for prayer requests. It's the best way to stay connected here at the House of Praise. If you're watching on the website, noperfectpeoplehere.com, there's a link at the top of the browser that says Connect Card. For Facebook and YouTube, there is a link embedded in the description. There's also a link for you to download today's sermon notes and to give if you'd like to. Please follow House of Praise on Facebook and subscribe on YouTube to never miss a service. Thank you for filling out your Connect Card. I hope you enjoy the service. Good morning, House of Praise. Welcome to Church Online. We're just going to have a great time in God's presence. We're two or more gathered. That's where he is. So in your living room, in your kitchen, or here with us on stage, God is moving. Amen. Sing with us. Whoa. Oh, I'm gonna live like my dreams are gone. 
You unravel me with the melody You surround me with a song of deliverance from my enemies till all my fears are gone. I'm no longer a slave.
When things are at their worst, we can always count on moms to be at their best. While the world around us is hunkered down in fear, they're the ones on the front lines, making the new normal feel a little bit more normal. So that one day, when this madness is all finally over, our children will one day tell stories about how in the spring of 2020, the world did not stop. It kept spinning and moving forward, fueled by the most powerful force on Earth, a mother's love. House of Praise, my name is Colleen, and I'm coming from my home because you've been coming from your home all these weeks, and I wanted to share my experience with you. Not coming from your home, but my... Anyway, my point is that I'm here to help you fill out your Connect card. So if you've been watching on our website, go noperfectpeoplehere.com, go to the upper right hand corner, click Connect, the Connect card will pop right up. If you've been watching on the app, you just go ahead to the home page, hit connect there, and the connect card again pops right up. If you have been watching on YouTube or Facebook, the link down in the description will also bring you to the connect card. But while you're there, don't forget, comment, like, subscribe, hit the bell, do all those other things as well. And I would just like to say thank you so much to everyone that has been giving their tithes and offerings online. We really do appreciate it. The House of Praise has been able to continue their great work in the community. And if you would like to give, we have some easy steps for you. At the website, noperfectpeoplehere.com, there is a link. You just hit give at the top of the page. Or type in noperfectpeoplehere.com backslash give. It's that easy, it's safe and secure. You can also just text H-O-P-N-Y to 77977. The last way is the physical way. Send a check right over to the House of Price. And again, thank you so much for your online giving. Also, next week, so excited, we're doing online communion. So don't forget your elements. And thank you everyone, and now, Pastor Juan. <coughs> Whoa, what? Hey, my man, can I pray for you? What? Why? Because you have the, uh... No, no, I don't. No, I might have. No, no, you don't. You're being ridiculous. <laughs> I should pray for healing for myself, too. Nope, God doesn't do that anymore. What? Heal? Yeah, <laughs> he sure does. The Bible is very clear about that. That was back then. Now you have doctors and pharmacies. You can literally take care of it yourself. Are you kidding me right now? You're going to tell me that I'm wrong? Because you can literally take half of the Bible out because it doesn't apply anymore. Like tithing. Whoa, the Bible says that if we bring our tithes to him, he will open a window. When was the last time you ever saw God open a window? Well, not literally. He created air conditioning. He doesn't need to open windows. There is so much wrong with what you just said. You are crazy if you believe I'm that. crazy? You're literally having an argument with yourself. Well, I'm practicing social distancing. Man, I thought Jesus was the same yesterday, today, and forever. We're in a series called Fake News. What is that? It's when people look at scriptures, sometimes with the best of intentions, but they misinterpret what the scripture says and they teach fake news. Let's pray and we'll ask God's help with the sermon today. Father, I just thank you for your word. Your word is always true. So we ask that you would send your word and cleanse us of wrong thought patterns, wrong teachings. God, things that we believe about you or your Bible that just aren't true. And so, Lord, we're seeking truth today. Come and speak to us by your spirit. Speak to us through your word. I pray that I would get out of your way and let you speak directly to each and every heart and that we would mix your word with faith and be doers of it. In Jesus' name, amen. All right. Listen, we're going to talk today about fake news. God doesn't do that anymore. In our search for the truth, what we hear a lot of times people teach is that God doesn't do that anymore. God doesn't do what anymore? Well, they'll say God doesn't do miracles the way he did in the Bible anymore. Or God doesn't use the gifts of the Spirit like prophecy or the gifts of healing or words of knowledge. He just doesn't do that anymore. Somehow, 
What we saw Jesus doing in Scripture was for Jesus. What we saw the Old Testament prophets prophesy, they don't, that doesn't happen anymore. There's no more prophecy. Somehow, all the miracles and the, and the different things that we saw the Holy Spirit doing through the believers in the first century church, well, God just doesn't do that anymore. I want to tell you why that's fake news. Because my Bible says this, Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Amen? And so in Hebrews 13, 8, if you go on to the next verse, it says, so don't be attracted to strange new ideas. What's a strange new idea? Well, that Jesus is different. He doesn't do that anymore. That the Holy Spirit doesn't work the way He did in the book of Acts. You know, it's a belief, I don't want to get into, you know, five syllable words this morning, but it's a belief called dispensationalism. Dun, dun, dun. It comes from the word dispense. It means God takes His grace and He dispenses it just to this group of people for this little piece of time. Then this little group of people for this little group of time only has a different grace. And so you have to have a theology degree to try to understand how God works with who, when. You know, God is a God of covenant. There's the Old Covenant, the New Covenant. Old Testament, New Testament. Jesus is the same. Yesterday, today, forever. He wants to do miracles in your life. His Holy Spirit is still available to each and every believer. And that's what we're going to dig into today. We're going to search for the truth to answer why God doesn't do that anymore. Do you believe God does miracles today? I hope you do. Stay with me. We'll figure it out. So, you know, when I think about this, I think about how, the, you know, the apostles didn't teach that, well, the gifts are just for us right now. Jesus never said, hey, after the last apostle dies, all that healing and prophecy and speaking in tongues and all the miracles you see, that's all going away. It's only for these guys. Yet, a lot of people teach that today, and, and that's completely fake news. In, in fact, I uh, know a Bible professor from one of the largest Christian universities in the country that gives me a hard time about this, where he says, this is, this is not for us today, that these things have passed away. And when I say to him, where, where do you get that from? You won't believe the scripture that they look at. They look at 1 Corinthians chapter 13. It says, prophecy, speaking in unknown languages, or speaking in tongues, and special knowledge, word of knowledge, or word of wisdom, will become useless. But love will last forever. Amen. We know love's the highest goal. But when are we talking about? Keep reading. Now our knowledge is partial and incomplete. Even the gift of prophecy reveals only part of the whole picture. Okay, we're with you. We, we, know, we know in part, we prophesy in part, we get it. But when the time of perfection comes, these partial things will be useless. They'll be done away. The King James, or New King James Version, says at this thing, when, when that which is perfect comes, then all these things are gone. They pass away. So he says to me, that which is perfect is the Bible. The original language is the inspired Word of God. It, it is the Scripture. It is perfect. But why do you think that that's what this verse is referring to? What it's saying is, when the time of perfection comes... Really, that word perfection there means completion. And so he says, yeah, when, the, when Scripture was completed, when, it was, when we had the whole Bible. But you, you, have, to, you have to see what he's saying here. He's, the, the writer is saying, when the time of perfection comes, these things will be useless. What's he saying? When we see Jesus face to face, we no longer need prophecy to tell us about Him. The Holy Spirit speaks prophecy to us to reveal Jesus. When, when we are talking to Jesus face to face, we no longer need to speak in tongues because we'll know Him and be known by Him. When we're either in heaven with Him or He returns, we don't even need these, these temporary bodies because we'll have a glorified body. When the time is completed, when the temporary time on this earth is done, that's when the fulfillment of all of these gifts are done. That's when we don't need them anymore. Because otherwise we're saying the Holy Spirit is limited to only pointing a Scripture out to you like an online Bible teacher. He can't speak to you directly. Jesus doesn't talk anymore other than just in, in the Bible. And man, you know, I've given my life to teach the Word and I believe that this is the more sure word of prophecy. Prophecy has to line up with this. But don't tell me God 
left us without miracles. Don't tell me God left us without the gifts of the Spirit that He gave to the church to help the church. We're going to look at the totality of Scripture, but they, they, they basically point to that one Scripture in the love chapter, by the way, talking about God's love, and say, you know what? We don't need these gifts anymore because we have the Bible. But that is not what it says. It's a time of perfection when all of it's done, when the book of Revelation is fulfilled, when we no longer need the gifts because we're with Him. Amen? Come on now, somebody. Help me today. You know, when I, when I think about this, I, I, I just think about how I'm a buffet guy. So maybe that influences my interpretation a little bit. What, what do you mean? People are like, are you a man of the Word or a man of the Spirit? Do you believe in the gift of the Spirit? Well, we have the Bible. That's the more sure word of prophecy. And I'm like, man, it's a buffet for me. I take them both. I want the Word of God. I've given the Word of God everything that happens, whether it's laying out of hands for healing or speaking in tongues or whatever you're doing, it better line up with the written Word of God. But then, man, I'm a man of the Spirit. Let the Holy Ghost flow and help us in this life. How many know we don't need less of the gifts of the Spirit? We need more. We don't need less of the Holy Spirit activity. We need more. Amen? And so they'll quote also Hebrews 11. In Hebrews 11, let me read it to you, it says this, Long ago, God spoke many times and in many ways to our ancestors through the prophets. Okay, we're all in there. We've got the prophets, the Old Testament. But now in these final days, He has spoken to us through His Son. Well, wait a minute. So what they're saying is they point to this, they go, you know, He used to prophesy, but now He speaks through His Son. But... There was still prophecy after Jesus ascended. There was, there was still prophecy in the New Testament church. In nowhere in that verse does it say, well, he used to speak through the prophets, but now he only speaks through Jesus. Again, baby, it's a buffet. He spoke through the prophets, and the prophets are recorded for us in the written word of God, but he also speaks through Jesus. It's an in addition to in the past, he spoke to us through the prophets. Now he speaks to us through Jesus also. Jesus quoted the prophets. He didn't throw them out. And nowhere does it say there's no more prophecy because we have Jesus now. Jesus fulfilled the prophecy, and he continues to give the spirit of prophecy to us today. Amen? And so I want to show you in, in Scripture why I don't believe it ended with just the apostles or why the dispensation list will say these gifts of the Spirit are only for the apostles. That period of grace is over. Once the last apostle dies, there's no more gifts of the Spirit. This is actually what's, what's taught. It's fake news. Let's look at 1 Timothy chapter 4. Do not neglect, now this is the Apostle Paul writing to his spiritual son Timothy, and he's saying do not neglect the spiritual gift within you. Okay, I'm with you. Wait a minute. The spiritual gift that you received through prophecy spoken over you and the prophecy was when the elders of the church laid their hands upon you so wait a minute first of all timothy's not an apostle but he's got a gift imparted to him weirder the elders of that local church laid their hands on him and prophesied over him and imparted gifts to him but they weren't apostles either it wasn't the original apostles with jesus or even the apostle paul no, this is the local church flowing and activating in the gifts outside of the activity of the apostles. And it's the same thing that happens today. And so nowhere in Scripture do you see when the apostles are gone, the gifts are done. Nowhere in the Scripture do you see without the apostles, we no longer have the gifts of the Spirit. It's the Holy Spirit. The Spirit of Jesus Christ. And Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Don't tell me it was just for them. He says it's for everyone who believes. These signs shall follow those who believe. In my name, they'll cast out demons. They'll speak in other languages. I mean, come on now, somebody. Do you believe? And the gifts are for you. The activity of the Holy Spirit is for you and I today. You know, when Paul goes, we read in chapter 13 about the love chapter and how they say, well, once this is time of perfection has come, the gifts are gone. But the chapter right before that, Paul is talking in 1 Corinthians 12 about the gifts of the Spirit and how the gifts are given to help each other, to help the church. And in fact, in verse 7, he says this, 
A spiritual gift is given to each of you. Look at somebody in your living room and say, he's talking to you. A spiritual gift is given to each of you. What for? So we can help each other. So Paul is saying, I'm describing the gifts that are given to the church. Everybody gets a spiritual gift. Not just, I mean, the natural gifts are great. If you're administrative or you can do carpentry, all that. But he's saying there's a spiritual gift. People that don't believe the Holy Spirit gives gifts today, what they say is, well, any gift you use for God and His kingdom, it becomes a spiritual gift. All right, fine. But that is not what this is talking about. And then to go on after he teaches how the gifts are given to the church in this chapter and say the next chapter, he says, well, when, when the Bible's done, these gifts are all going to go away. He never says that. These gifts are given to the church. God continues to give these gifts to the church. Matter of fact, it's not in your notes, but in Ephesians 4, he goes through how after Jesus ascended, he gave some gifts to the church. Pastors, apostles, pastors, prophets, teachers, evangelists. For what? For the maturing of the saints. For the building up of the saints. So the gifts always have these twofold purpose. The gifts show Jesus. The gifts draw us to Jesus. They show us who He is. And the gifts help each other, building up His church. Amen? Come on now, somebody. And so when I think about this, what, when I, I begin to teach this kind of a topic, often people will say to me, well, then why doesn't God do miracles today? And I always say, He does. Why, why do you think He doesn't? And I, and I want to draw a parallel for you. So let's look at a miracle of Jesus, and then I want to tell you a story. So Jesus had this miracle in John chapter 6, and so you can turn there or read it in your own time, where he feeds 5,000 people at once. So we'll pick it up at verse 5. It says a huge crowd is following him. And Jesus says to Philip, you know, hey, we need to get bread to feed these people. In verse 6, it says he was testing Philip. I think that's funny. Jesus is always testing us a little bit, just to see what's in there to reveal our heart. So because Jesus already knew what he's going to do. So he says to Philip, yo, Philip, you know, we have 5,000 people here. What are we going to feed them? Philip's like, you know, we can work for months and not have enough food to feed these guys. Jesus, let's send them home. And Jesus is like, no, you feed them. We're going to feed them. And then what happens is somebody comes up and says, hey, we've got this young boy here and he's got a lunch. He's got some barley loaves, he's got some fish. Now, I actually heard... Two different occasions, preachers preach this. Well, the, the, the bread was bigger back then, and maybe it was a large fish, like a trout. Can you imagine this little boy carrying, like, you know, a, a, a huge piece of bread so big it could feed 5,000 people? Come on now. That's what I'm saying. Fake news. This was a kid's lunch. His mama had made him a lunch and said, Azariah, bring this lunch with you, some fish. Some bread, he's making a sandwich, maybe two sandwiches. But it wasn't anything to feed 5,000 people. So Jesus takes the bread, takes the fish, he thanks God for it, and he breaks it, begins to distribute it, begins to give it out. And something amazing happens. Everyone eats all they want. And then it says in, in verses 12 and 13 that they all ate to their fill, and then it says something very strange. When they picked up the leftovers after everyone was full, said there was 12 baskets left over. 12 baskets left over. One for each of the apostles to remember how Jesus had just done a miracle of multiplication. See, here, here's the thing about it. When we begin to trust God for our provision, He does supernatural things. When we give Him what we have, Lord, I, I just have this, this tithe. Lord, I, I, I just have my time. It's, it's, it's a little boy's lunch, God. I don't have a lot, but what I have, I'm giving to you. He thanks the Father for it. He breaks it, and He multiplies it. And He pours it back in a greater measure that we can even understand. But that's not why I brought this up today. When you look at verse 14, it says this. So the people saw Him do a miraculous sign, and they exclaimed, Surely... He is the prophet we've been expecting. If you get nothing else out of today, I want you to understand this. The purpose of miracles was to show who Jesus was. So when He does this miracle, their eyes were open and they're like, He's the prophet we've been expecting. He's the Messiah. He's the guy. 
And so miracles show people who Jesus is. Whether it's a Christian taking a gift of the Spirit and edifying and encouraging their brother and sister in the church, that shows God's love to them. Or it is a miracle happening out in the street like Jesus feeding the 5,000 they suddenly realize God is there and he does supernatural things. So let me tell you a story quick. When I was in Rome, New York as a, as a campus pastor, we, we had an outreach where we're going to feed people. There was a, a lot of people in need there, and so we said we're going to go into the park, and we, we advertised it with flyers in the doors, and we said we're, we're going to set up, we expected about 150 people, we set up food for 300. We roll up with our truck, and what we did is we had it all packed into uh, you know, paper bags like you get at the store. It's going to be two paper bags full of groceries for every, every person that came up. And so we're setting up the tables. People start lining up before we ever got there. We're setting up the tables to put it all out, and we're opening the truck, and somebody comes to me and says, Pastor Lon, we've got a problem. So what's the matter? They said, there's a lot of people here. And I said, well, we've got food for 300. I'm figuring, we, we plan for twice as many as we expect. They said, no, you've you got to come see it. I get out of the truck, and it's just lines. And I said, two people, get out there and count. They come back, and they both said the same thing. There's about 1,500 people here. Everybody starts to freak out. What are we going to do? I turned to Pastor David, who was there with me serving, and he goes, Pastor Lon, what are we going to do? I said, just came out of me. It was like the Holy Ghost spoke, and I didn't. I said, fishes and loaves, brother, fishes and loaves. And he's like, all right, how do you want to do this? I said, you and I are at the end of the trailer. Every bag that comes out, we're going to lay hands on it, ask God to multiply it. We're going to hand it to the volunteers. They're going to keep filling the table. And I'm telling you, we fed every one of those people, 1,500 people. And when we were all done, I turned into the truck and I said to the guy, we're done. And he said, look, Pastor, and there was 12 bags left in the truck. Don't tell me God doesn't do miracles today. Don't tell me Jesus had a different grace for the apostles than he has for us today. I've seen it with my own eyes. I didn't do anything. I'm not saying that to brag about myself. I'm saying the Holy Spirit still gives gifts to people. The Holy Spirit still does miracles today like he did in the days of Jesus. And anything else is fake news. So I don't know what you need today, but I know this. There's a God of miracles who wants to meet you right now where you're at. He wants to give you peace in the midst of the storm. He wants to give you comfort. He wants to provide for your needs, heal your body, restore your relationships. I don't know what you're going through, but I know this. He's the answer for every one of our needs. Amen? God is the same. He is always desperately seeking us. And He makes His power available to us just to show us who He is. To show us that He's all-powerful and that He loves us completely. Amen? In Romans chapter 14, I'm sorry, in John chapter 14, Jesus said it this way, I tell you the truth, anyone who believes in Me will do the same works I've done and greater still because I'm going to the Father. How could Jesus say that He was Jesus? Because He knew that the works He did were by the Holy Spirit on this earth. He, he came down and He lived as a sinless man to show us that the Holy Spirit would flow through us and do works. We haven't got time to go into it today, but you can read about it for yourself. When I think it was Matthew 14, Peter sees Jesus walking on the water and he says to Jesus, call me and I'll come to you. And he gets out and he walks on the water with Jesus. Now everybody wants to point to the fact that Peter got upset when he saw the storms and he sunk. But let me tell you something. He was doing the same miracle Jesus was doing. He was walking on the water to Jesus because of the power of the Holy Spirit. And I tell you this, we can criticize Him for doubting once He was out there, but we all get overwhelmed by our circumstances at different times. I would rather be a wet water walker than a dry boat talker any day. And so I'm asking you to trust God to get out of your boat do what He's asking you to do. He, he's calling us unto Himself. Amen? My last Scripture for today is from John chapter 20. So the disciples saw Jesus do many other miraculous signs in addition to the ones recorded in this book. It, Jesus did a lot of miracles. But we're still doing miracles today. God is still doing miracles today. But these are written so that you may believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that by believing in Him, you will have life by the power of His name. 
man, miracles just point to Jesus. You know, whenever God has done anything, if I've prayed for somebody and seen them healed, or I get, tell somebody, I believe God is saying this, and they said, how did you know? I'm like, I didn't. That's the Lord. We always point to Jesus, no matter what happens. But Jesus is saying, I've shown you the miracles to show you I am who I said I am. God Almighty, the Son of the living God. And so do you believe that God does miracles today? Do you believe what the Bible says about Jesus? Do you know that He wants to do a miracle in your life? Then at this time, it's time to give up control to Him. See, when, when Peter stepped out of the boat, he gave up his safety, gave up his control. He took a chance on Jesus and he reached out to Him and he walked towards Him and he did the impossible. I'm asking you to give up everything. Leave everything, the safety you know, everything you know, and reach out to walk to Jesus today. I'm going to pray a prayer with you. I'm going to ask you to just surrender control to Him. Give, him. give Him your sin. Give Him your fears. Give Him all these things. But let Him be the Lord of everything. Amen? Pray this at home. Say, Dear Jesus, I admit I'm a sinner. I haven't always lived by Your Word. I haven't always followed Your ways. I haven't always trusted you. I believe you're a God of miracles. But whether I see a miracle or not, I surrender control of my whole life to you. Come be the Lord of everything, Jesus. Forgive my sin. Take control of my life. I'll serve you no matter what. In Jesus' name, amen. Listen, if you prayed that prayer, I'm going to ask you to please tell me on your Connect card or Email me, Pastor Lot at houseofpraise.cc and say, I've accepted Jesus as my Lord and Savior because I want to pray for you by name. I want to know you're out there. We love you. God is for you, not against you. And if you're home today wondering if God still does miracles, yes, He does. Tune in next Sunday as we have a special Mother's Day message. God bless you. Thanks for being here. Praise online broadcast. We hope that you enjoyed the service. If you accepted Jesus as your Savior, please add it to your Connect card. We will pray for you and send you a book to help you. For all of you, if you need prayer, add it to your Connect card. Please send the link of the service to your friends and come back next Sunday for another great service. See you later.